This is Optimal Work Daily, episode 1269. Seven Common Elements When Transitioning from Founder to CEO by Dr. Jeff Cornwall of drjeffcornwall.com. And hey there, I am Dan and I'm your narrator here. Welcome to this Friday edition of OWD. Hope your week's been a good one and uh, we're gonna get right to our post now as we hear from Dr. Jeff and optimize your life. Seven Common Elements When Transitioning from Founder to CEO by Dr. Jeff Cornwall of drjeffcornwall.com. When entrepreneurs start their first business, not only is it their first time as a business owner, but also their first time as a CEO. Being the CEO means very little in the early days, but as the company grows, the title of CEO takes on more meaning. Defining your role and your style as the CEO of your company takes planning and specific effort on your part. It may even feel a bit awkward at times, but you have to establish what your role will be as the CEO. Growth changes your job. Many entrepreneurs start their businesses because they like the hands-on part of their business. Engineers like to engineer. Furniture makers like to build stuff. At some point in the growth of the business, the entrepreneur begins to move away from the hands-on part of what their company does. This can be a painful and frustrating period. As they move away from the hands-on, entrepreneurs must learn the other strengths and weaknesses they bring to the business. If you have a knack for numbers, keep the financial management of the business part of your core responsibilities. If you're good with customers, don't be in a hurry to give up selling and customer relations. Your job description as CEO should be a reflection of your skills, abilities, and knowledge. However, no matter what your specific role as the CEO is in your business, growth demands you start to build your team. Delegation hesitation. There are three common mistakes that entrepreneurs make when delegating. The first mistake is being hesitant to delegate. When first beginning to delegate to employees, some entrepreneurs might feel that no one can do what they do as well as they can do it. Employees might not care quite as much as the entrepreneur does. After all, this is your business and your reputation is tied to its success. To employees, it's simply a job. To overcome this hesitancy to delegate, entrepreneurs should remind themselves that sometimes good enough is good enough. While employees may not carry out the tasks delegated to the level of perfection that you would, they can learn to perform these tasks well enough for the business to run smoothly and for customers to stay satisfied. Moving too quickly. The second mistake entrepreneurs make is rushed delegation. Rather than being hesitant to delegate, entrepreneurs who make this mistake seem as if they can't wait to get tasks off their plates. We see this quite often with serial entrepreneurs who are so eager to get to their next new business idea that they don't take the time to get their current one running properly before moving on. These entrepreneurs delegate without providing proper training and without giving clear expectations for performance. In the rush to delegate, tasks and responsibilities can also end up being assigned to the wrong person or mistakenly to multiple people simultaneously. This can lead to chaos and frustration. To overcome rushed delegation, develop a clear and detailed plan that includes what needs to be delegated, who should be assigned the task, and what needs to be done to prepare employees for their new responsibilities. Trust. The third mistake is undermining the delegation process. Even after the delegation of tasks and responsibilities, employees will still tend to want to go directly to the entrepreneur to get an answer to a question or to make a decision instead of going to the person now assigned to that area. If the entrepreneur answers that question or makes that decision, it will completely undermine the authority of the person it has been delegated to. I developed a seven second delay to avoid this mistake. When I was asked for an answer or a decision, I would always pause for a few moments to ask myself, is this still my responsibility or have I delegated this to someone else? If I had delegated it, I'd answer by sending them to the employee to whom I had given that responsibility. Delegation is a lot like raising teenagers. At some point, you have to begin to let go so they can learn and grow up. With your business, if you don't learn to let go and delegate, your business will never successfully grow up to the next stage of development. Seven common elements of CEO job description. As founders build their team and delegate responsibilities to their leadership group, they must pay attention to seven elements that are part of every entrepreneur's job description as CEO. One, growth can be stressful for everyone in the company. 
The entrepreneur must remind everyone of the vision as to where the business is headed and provide inspiration for the company's potential. Two, the entrepreneur must be the keeper of the culture and lead the efforts to create an intentional culture that represents the founder's values. Three, growth requires resources. As the CEO, the entrepreneur is responsible for securing the necessary resources to ensure successful growth. Four, the entrepreneur must work with the leadership team to create systems that will support ongoing growth and ensure customers' needs are being met. Five, the structure of the business should never just happen as people get hired into the business. The entrepreneur must ensure that structure is tied to the strategy, culture, and business model of the company. As CEO, every entrepreneur must be prepared to be the chief strategist and adjust the direction the business takes based on changing market demands and opportunities. Seven, finally, as CEO, the entrepreneur serves as emotional shock absorber to keep a positive climate in the business, even when the business faces the inevitable challenges that are part of growth. By integrating these elements into your job description, you will be on the path to becoming a more effective CEO of the business you founded. You just listened to the post titled Seven Common Elements When Transitioning from Founder to CEO by Dr. Jeff Cornwall of drjeffcornwall.com. When it comes to hiring, don't go searching for the one. Just meet your match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So when you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash startup. Just go to indeed.com slash startup right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's indeed.com slash startup. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. You don't need me to tell you that something always comes up when you're running a small business. Take the pain out of payroll benefits and HR and put the joy back in running your business with Gusto. Gusto's payroll and HR services can make it a little easier. Gusto was designed for you, the small business owner. They take the pain out of running a business, automatically calculating paychecks, filing payroll taxes, setting up open enrollment. Gusto does it all. Want more? Time tracking, health insurance, 401k, onboarding, commuter benefits, offer letters, access to HR experts. Well, you get the idea. With Gusto, you can focus on the joy of running your business. And it's super easy to set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, Gusto can transfer all your data for you. So it's no surprise 94% of customers are likely to recommend Gusto, 94. And here's the best part. Because you're a listener, you get three months totally free. All you have to do is go to gusto.com slash O-W-D. Again, that's gusto.com slash O-W-D. And I'm telling you, you're going to love Gusto. Get started today. And thank you to Dr. Jeff, Growing up, entrepreneurship and small business was normal dinnertime conversation at the Cornwall household. This set the stage for a decades-long career pursuing entrepreneurial ventures and sharing his knowledge in the classroom. Jeff has spent more than 40 years as a serial entrepreneur. In the 1970s, he started several small businesses and was involved in various family ventures. In the late 1980s, following several years in academics, Dr. Cornwall co-founded Atlantic Behavioral Health Systems in Raleigh, North Carolina, and spent nearly a decade leading the company as president and CEO. After growing to more than 300 employees, he and his partners sold most of their healthcare holdings. After the sale, Dr. Cornwall decided it was time to return to the classroom to share his experience and knowledge with aspiring entrepreneurs. He's now the president and CEO of The Entrepreneurial Mind, and his blog was named one of the 100 best websites for entrepreneurs by Forbes magazine. So definitely you want to check that one out come by drjeffcornwall.com for a lot more articles. But that is gonna do it for today here on Optimal Work Daily. Hope you enjoyed this Friday show and that you have a great start to your weekend. And I'll see you right back here again for the Saturday show tomorrow. 
and that is where your optimal life awaits.